Hello and welcome to Talking Golf with Gary. This week, the dynamic Gary will introduce you to all kinds of topics pertinent to this past week of golf. He'll give you some tidbits of information as what's coming up and take you on a tour around the world for all of the golfing highlights. Sit back and enjoy Talking Golf with Gary. And hello and welcome to another uh, episode of Talking Golf with Gary, number 163 on May the 14th, 2012. And I hope everybody had a great week out there. It was uh, uh, another uh, good week on the PGA Tour. Uh, it was the Players' Championship week. And, of course, a lot of people consider the Players' Championship to be the uh, fifth major on the tour. And it usually gets uh, one of the best feels of the year, as well as is one of the highest paid, if not the highest uh, payout uh, of a tournament for anybody. So it's a nice win, a prestigious win for whoever gets it. There's also, of course, exemptions involved, and and that's always a a, a nice thing that any player uh, really uh, really enjoys getting and uh, likes so they can plan their schedule. And, of course, this year's was won by uh, Matt Kuchar, who won the Players' Championship with a gutsy performance down the stretch, making cl- clutch putts to hold off challenges. Kuchar opened with a bogey and quickly fell three shots behind. After coming back and grabbing the lead, he was locked in a brief battle with Martin Laird. And when he looked across the water from the 16th green to see Ricky Fowler dressed all in his orange outfit, uh, it's his Sunday orange outfit, and uh, watching Fowler sink a birdie putt on the island green, which cut Kuchar's lead to two strokes. Kuchar answered with a birdie of his own on the 16th to restore his margin to three shots. He uh, found land on a par 3 17th, even though he three putted for a bogey, that extended the drama for one more hole. And best of all, he tapped in for a par on the 18th and celebrated with his entire family. He won by two shots over four players who had a chance on the back nine. Fowler, slowed by a double bogey on the fifth hole, birdied the 16th and 17th and had an eight-foot birdie putt on the last hole that would have put enormous pressure on Kuchar. It caught the right lip and he had to settle for a 70. Ben Curtis, the former British Open champion, ran off four straight birdies around the turn, but not enough until it was too late. He made a 10-foot birdie on the last hole for a 68. Zach Johnson was in range until a bogey on the 15th. He made a great par save on the 18th for 68. Laird was the only runner-up who was tied for the lead, running off three straight birdies on the back nine, until a poor tee shot on 14th led to a bogey. Laird, who three-putted the 18th in regulation at the Barclays in 2010 that allowed Kuchar into a playoff that he won for his most recent win, made a bogey on the 18th at Sawgrass after nearly hitting it into the water. He shot 67. Kevin Na had a one-shot lead going into the final round and was under pressure from the viewing public more than any player. His pre-shot routine is painful to watch, and he knows it. The waggles, the whiffs, he does on purpose so he can start over. The practice swings, the indecision. In fact, he uh, was booed at uh, some spots uh, uh, along the day, something you rarely see on a golf course. He tried to speed up, even walking well ahead of Kucha to get to his ball, and he wonders if rushing hurt him. Na made four bogeys in a five-hole stretch at the turn to lose the lead, but what really stung was the chance he heard from the gallery. Everyone knew this guy had a hard time making his swing. And again, the worst was on the par 3 13th when he pulled his tee shot into the water, effectively ending all hope. Some in the crowd saying, na, 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 goodbye. He shot 76, extending a remarkable trend at Sawgrass since the tournament moved from March to May in 2007. It's one thing that the 54-hole leader has never won the players in those six years. None of the third-round leaders has ever shot better than 74 in the final round with an average score of 76.3. Luke Donald shot 30 on the back nine for a 66, making him stick around to see if it would be enough. It wasn't, and he wound up in sixth place. Not quite enough for him to return to number one in the world ranking. 
Tiger Woods shot 40 on the front nine and rallied for 73, at least finishing the Players' Championship under par. He tied for 40th. It's the first time in his career that he has finished no better than 40th in three straight tournaments. The streak began after a five-shot win at Bay Hill for his first PGA Tour title in 30 months. Kucha finished at 13 under and collected $1.71 million. He moved to number three in the Ryder Cup standings and to a career-best number five in the world rankings. So congratulations go out to uh, Matt Kucha with a big win in yesterday's uh, Players' Championship. And congratulations also to Portugal's Ricardo Santos, who came from stro- four strokes behind to set a new championship record as he stormed to a four-shot victory in the Madeira Islands Open. Santos also became the first Portuguese-born player to win on home soil in the 40-year history of the European Tour after posting a last-round 63 for a 22-under total on the Santo de Serra course. Sweden's Magnus Carlsen birdied the last in a round of 67 to finish second at 18-under. The 29-year-old Santos birdied his closing three holes to also set a record lowest winning final round in the 19-year history of the event. The victory earned Santos, a former Challenge Tour graduate, a one-year European Tour exemption, as well as entry to the upcoming PGA Championship at Wentworth. Andreas Hardo of Denmark finished third one stroke further back after a 67. And Sun Ju An beat Morgan Pressel and NB Park in, in a playoff to claim the Salon Park Cup, the first major of the year on the JLPGA Tour. Pressel had the lead at the eighth when things began to unravel. She bo- bogeyed the 173 yard par 3 eighth. She bogeyed the 391 yard par 4 11th. She bogeyed the 512-yard par 512. She bogeyed the 401-yard par 414th. Meanwhile, on the JLPGA's money misle- money list leader for the past two seasons, was having some problems of her own with bogeys on the long par fours 9 and 14. Pressel and on left the door wide open for Park, and for a while it looked like she was going to bust through and never look back three-time JLPGA winner Park, looking for her second major on tour, birdied the 188-yard par 3 13th and the par 3 15th to get to 6 under on the day and 10 under for the week. But then she too stumbled badly down the stretch with back-to-back bogeys on the 16th and 17th. When she parred the 408-yard 18th to become leader in the clubhouse at 8 under, it looked like anything could happen. When Ahn made a, an amazing walk-off birdie on 18 to join Park at 8-under, it was up to Pressel to beat them, join them, or leave the playoff to them. She closed with her fourth straight par, but Ahn made quick work of both LPGA major winners with a six-foot birdie putt on the first playoff hole. So the uh, ladies uh, having a a thinner schedule here in the States uh, are playing on some of the other ladies' tours around the world as uh, Morgan Pressel, uh, Michelle Wee also is another American playing in that event and a number of others. And uh, that was the Salon Pass Cup, the first major of the year. And we are going to take a break and be back after these messages. For all the listeners of Talking Golf with Gary, Audible is offering a free audiobook download with a free 14-day trial to give you a chance to check out their service. Over 75,000 titles to choose from in many different categories, including science fiction, mysteries, biographies, sports, computers, you name it, they have it. To download your free audiobook today, Go to audiblepodcast.com slash Talking Golf with Gary. Again, that's audiblepodcast.com slash Talking Golf with Gary for your free audiobook today. You 
you can now hear our show while on the go with Stitcher Smart Radio. On demand, news, talk, and more on your mobile phone. The latest episode is always available for you. No syncing needed and no memory or storage wasted. Available for your iPhone, Android phone, WebOS phone, or your BlackBerry. Downloading is easy. Go to Stitcher.com or check out your app store. Stitcher Smart Radio, the smarter way to listen to radio. Milwaukee Brewers and National League Central news and notes. BrewtownSports.Potomatic.com. Sponsor an ad on the podcast. Support our show and let people know about your business. Email us today. And uh, if you'd like to be a part of the show, along with anybody you'd like to sponsor it, you can drop us an email at talkinggolf at gmail.com. That's talkinggolf at gmail.com. Or you can call our voicemail hotline at 516-619-6341. Either one of those uh, uh, ways of getting in touch with us will work uh, perfectly. So uh, give it a try. And in other golf news... British player turned broadcaster Peter Alice is among those who believe Tiger Woods is getting too much instruction. At a news conference before his induction into the World Golf Hall of Fame, Alice said Woods' golfing brain for some reason or another is completely addled. What astonished him was a scene from the practice range at the Masters last year. Alice said he was sitting with Arnold Palmer at the end of the range. And quoting Alice, and now 50 yards away is Tiger Woods at the green nearest the television facility being shown how to trip, how to chip. You must do it this way, this way. And I said to Arnold, are we seeing he was the greatest chipper in the world for a period? And this guy is teaching, no, don't do it that way. It's like Pavarotti saying, I'm fed up with being a tenor. I think I'm going to sing as a baritone. Land's sake, Alice said. That's as stupid as that, in my opinion. That's not a criticism. That's an opinion. But that's why he's fuddled and befuddled. But he's gone. He's gone at the moment. And, of course, a lot of people are uh, weighing in. Uh, in an email we got from uh, Ken in Long Island, who says that uh, uh, his abil- Tiger's ability not to hit a draw anymore is uh, causing him to have problems on the par five and not pick up strokes on that hole. And and I believe that came from uh, uh, Nick Faldo uh, and or uh, Johnny Miller, who uh, both said that uh, he uh, needs to uh, begin hitting a high drawer again. And uh, Kenny uh, from Long Island relayed that information to us. And Nancy Lopez will receive the Byron Nelson Prize next week at the HP Byron Nelson Championship outside Dallas. The award recognizes people in golf who show the same philanthropic spirit for which Nelson was known. And the Irish Boot Open got another boost Tuesday when PGA champion Keegan Bradley announced that he was playing in it. The field will feature three of the last four major champions, Bradley, McElroy, and Darren Clark. And speaking of McElroy, uh, Rory McElroy is to throw out the first pitch at a San Francisco Giants game June 12th, two days before the start of the U.S. Open at the Olympic Club in San Francisco. And England's Paul Casey withdrew from the Volvo World Match Play Championship on Sunday because of a right shoulder injury. Sweden's Robert Carlson took his spot in the 24-man field on the European Tour. Casey withdrew from the Players' Championship on Friday after shooting a 42 on the front nine in the first round. He dislocated the shoulder snowboarding over the holidays. Carlson timed for 56th on Sunday in the Players' Championship. And let's move on to uh, birthdays. 
And on the birthday uh, list this week is Frank Nabilo, the uh, uh, Golf Channel uh, commentator. He turns 52. And also this week, Ken Ventura turns 81 years old. Hunter Mahan turns 30 years old coming up this week. And finally, K.J. Choi turns 42 years old. So happy birthday uh, to all of those uh, gentlemen and uh, many, many more. And let's move on to the calendar. Now it's time to do the calendar. Now it's time to do the calendar. Oh, hooray, let's sing the calendar. Now it's time to do the calendar. And on the calendar for this week, uh, next week, the PGA Tour, of course, is having the HP Byron Nelson Championship, which Keegan Bradley is the defending champion. And the ladies are in action at the Cybase Match Play Championship, where Suzanne Pedersen will defend. The Nationwide Tour is playing the BMW Charity Pro-Am presented by the Sinex Corporation, and Golf Mulroy was the winner there last year. And finally, the European Tour is holding its Volvo World Match Play Championship, and Ian Poulter will be the defending champion there. And that's going to wrap it up for this week uh, on golf and uh, we will uh, be back next week with to recap all the action for you. And don't forget, there's still plenty of time to get your emails in for your picks on the uh, U.S. Open this year. I'd like to see uh, what everybody or who everybody is uh, choosing to win that uh, prestigious tournament. So get those uh, emails in to TalkingGolf at gmail.com. And uh, we will see you all next week. So I hope you all have a great week. We'll see you then with another episode of Talking Golf with Gary. Good night, everybody. <laughs>